What is going on guys, it is Pure Jez here and today I'm going to be bringing you a velocity sinking tutorial. Now, I mainly edit in After Effects nowadays, but previously I used Vegas and for any projects now that will only require me to edit for a day or two and just basically syncing, I'll use Vegas. And in fact, the Pure Team Taj, the recent one on my channel, that was uh, all done in Vegas and in fact you can see a clip from the Team Taj here that I'm going to use today. So, a few things to note before I get started, is that I'm going to try and show you as many different techniques with syncing with velocity. Uh, other techniques you can use while using velocity are splitting clips, and I don't mean syncing it as in, you know, sort of stretching the clips, but I just mean cutting and jumping forward, rather than just speeding up completely for ages. So, I'm also going to go over different ways to help it flow, and the fade types. So if you wanted something that looks kind of a nice fade like this, I'll go over that and different ways you could really use it in different situations you want to use it in. So with that being said, let's get started. The song I'm using is Complètement Fou by Vansil. I actually covered him in a, in fact, I think it was the second or third episode of music. Check him out, he's awesome. And you can hear that the song sounds great, especially for singing, because if we look at the waveform, this audio track here, you can clearly see the beats for syncing, and it's actually the perfect song to use to show you guys how to sync. So, the differences between velocity and just standard dragging and stretching your clip. In velocity, you get a much more continued effect. In the cut and stretch method, like this, you're basically going from 100% speed to 50, Back to 100 and there's no real flow if you actually do this in velocity it pretty much just looks like this like there's no flow to that it just looks really boring and then you slow it down and then you put it back to normal speed like that's what it looks like but with velocity what we're going to do is we're actually going to make this flow a lot better so something like this and you can already see in that it flows so much nicer than it would with that uh, just stretching the clip so, let's get started. I have the first beat synced already. By synced, I mean lined up to the beat. I don't actually mean fully velocity synced, I just mean it's lined up. That's usually the best thing to do when starting off your clip. So, what I'm going to do now is, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna do something quite crazy for you guys that haven't seen this type of syncing before, especially when using velocity. I'm just gonna go ahead and from here, from a few frames before, I don't know, like, how many is that? That's one, right? I'm zoomed in too far. For a few frames before, say, three or four, I'm then going to create a marker here. A few frames before the beat. On the beat, I'm going to create another one by double-clicking and dragging up. This is now at 300% speed. Obviously, that does not look good, so we're going to have to bring that back down. Now, depending on how far or how long ahead we bring this beat down will depend on will actually affect how the clip looks and flows if we bring it out to here you'll see that it's sort of at a high speed for longer if we shorten it you'll see that it's at a high speed for a shorter time so another factor that affects how it looks is where it's positioned vertically not horizontally so you can see when we move it up and down it basically just affects the percentage so you can see by the little uh, little detail window by the cursor it says it's at 300% speed which is three times normal speed then it's at 200 and at 150 40 30 everything zero and even goes into negative speeds I should mention that's uh, something you should be wary of so the first rule I'm gonna teach you guys when syncing with velocity is never go below 38% speed below that you're going down to less than 24 frames per second. And that results in choppiness. You can see it there. 38% speed is still choppy, but it's a lot smoother and it's harder to notice. However, I will say that with the introduction of 60 FPS on YouTube, if you can avoid going lower than 45, try. Because at least then you're staying at around 30, 28, 29-ish. So, that is the first thing I'll teach you guys. The second thing 
to note before we get fully into syncing are the fade types. Now, a fade type is basically how this curve fades or rolls down. So you can see it starts off high and then it sort of it moves quite linear in the center and then it sort of softens out at the bottom, sort of rests smoothly. If we right click this, we can change it. Now, a linear fade is just a straight line. A fast fade fades down as fast as possible at the start and then smoothens out. Now, these get flipped if you're going the other way. As you can see, a fast fade, it starts off fast and then slows down. Both of them start off fast and slow down. However, the difference is you're going up instead of down, so it's not really resting too well. And of course, if we go slow on this one, you can see it sort of provides this effect. However, for syncing with velocity, you generally want to go with smooth, too fast, or in some cases, slow to fast, which provides this sort of quick U shape. So, let's actually get into the syncing. Yeah, the faster way to do it is just to remove the envelope. Okay, we have our first beat. A couple of frames before, we're going to place our marker, or our uh, point. I'm going to call them points from now on. And then on the actual beat, I'm going to make another point and bring it up. Then we're going to bring it down after for the third point, and we're going to say 45. That looks pretty nice, but we're going to check out what it looks like with fast. That's not as bad. However, if you do notice, it moves really, really quickly at the beat, and it's not very nice looking. We can bring down the velocity of the point, which is a lot smoother. Generally, that's better to do uh, than to have it at fully 300. That can cause, like, that can just cause it to look weird if it's on scoping out animations rather than a movement, but I think what was actually the nicest there was just the smooth fade. And let's bring it down a little. That's nice. Now, we have a predicament. We have quite a few beats up until the next shot. That's at normal speed. What some people would do is this. They would speed it up, and then from here they would create another point, and then bring it back down. That's one method, and it's viable. You can do this. However, I think what flows nicest is keeping at the same speed, but using these other beats that we have to sort of reinforce the flow. So let's press S to split it here, and we'll bring a few things forward. Alright, so let's bring these, sort of, let's cut a little bit this out. Let's cut it like here. So we have the scope, pretty solidified here, and then we're going to cut again, bring it up to about here before he shoots, and then if we look in the marker, still isn't shot, so we're going to make another adjustment, about this far. Eh. That'll be fine, because what we will do is we'll bring up the speed. Ta-da! And let's make this slow, so it sort of comes up nicely, and then we have a really nice beat here. Dun, dun, dun. Right. So let's bring this down. It's very repetitive, Vegas syncing, and once you get faster and faster at it, it's actually, it's pretty efficient, like I said, depending on how fast you are, it's pretty efficient um, in the effect that it provides and how quickly you can get it done. So let's have a look at what we have. As you can see, that flows quite nicely, the little to jump here is really nice and of course the effect of the speeding up and slowing down is actually to do with how fast it speeds up and how fast it slows down or how slow it goes afterwards if you were to just leave this at 100 it doesn't really have the same effect and that is the important thing to remember is that if you just have all of your points at 100 and then just do these faster beats it just doesn't have the same effect and that's important to remember especially when you're doing uh, movement syncing so when someone's sprinting or moving forward in a scene 
to have it going from very fast to very slow really, really helps, you know, the visibility of the sinking. Now something else I like to do is use this reload animation or um, restocking of the chamber animation. I absolutely love this and it's great to sync with. We're going to definitely use a fast fade here. Bring down the speed a little and do the same thing for this one. And as you can see, I'm not using the markers here. I'm just using purely the waveform. And this is something that if you can't do now, you will be able to do later after a while of syncing. You get so used to it and you can read the waveform really easily. So as you can see, that is sick. That just looks so nice. Now again, we have another predicament of a long gap. Some clips fall like this, they just have long gaps between each uh, each shot. But some clips are uh, quite fast, so you won't need to use this. But we're going to go ahead and do the same thing again. Because we have three really nice consecutive beats followed by a little bit of a break. And if we look at the clip, you'll see that there's actually a really majestic looking part where he's flying through the air into his death and then gets taken out. So we're going to actually use this with the break. Music is your friend when editing. As long as you keep to the style of music, it's great. If there's a long pause between a beat, that sounds quite majestic. Do something that looks quite majestic. It helps, definitely. So with th these three beats, we're going to do the same cutting method we did before. So we're going to go into the scope for the second one. We're going to go further on to like here. And then for the third one, he's going to be flying through the air. So about here. That works. I think we'll have him hit on this one. This one here. He already does, but we're going to do something even nicer than this, I think. What are we on now? 45, aha. Uh -huh. So, we can bring down the velocity to 38, and this one to 38 as well. And we're going to do a little sync of movement for this. Like, that much. We can even put it to 31, because it's just such a short time. As you can see, that looks beautiful, how it just sort of slides forward. And then we're going to repeat the same thing we've been doing since the start. This sort of nice pattern and fast fade. Can bring down the speed a little bit more to make it more of a start stop motion. Extend it maybe. Bring down the actual velocity speed. It's all about tweaking this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the sort of movement part of syncing. It's very similar, but you kind of have to be more harsh with it to uh, really make it stand out. So like I said, let's move on to a point of movement. Normally I wouldn't do this in an actual edit. I would actually transition in a different way, but we're just going to crossfade. It's just simple. So again, we have these nice little triple beat going here. We're going to do the same thing. And like I said before, the difference in speed is very important when it comes to effective uh, movement syncing. So let's actually go down to 31 in this. But not use fast fade because the longer it's above 31, the better. For the FPS reasons, of course about here a few frames before 31 and again up here and let's bring it out a little bit longer 38 and we might fast fade this one there's actually a double B here dun, 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 this here we're gonna mark this one as well and we're actually gonna sync this again so it makes it look like the shot is synced as well and in fact, we didn't actually have to do anything. However, do note, when you cut fast fades in the middle, it creates another fast fade on the other side, which, when you go up, 
doesn't look as nice. So change that to slow or linear, whatever you want. So let's have a look at this. Nice. And I think I'm going to move on to the last little technique that I use. Let's speed this up. And we'll go sort of in the center. So, as you can see, there's another shot here, not too long after. It's just because we're at a slow speed. It's actually quite close to uh, this sync point. And we can actually use this to our advantage because we have two quite separated beats. And what we can do is we can do a U-shape type sync here. So we can bring this up to 100. And we can change this to a slow fade. And then we'll just move the speed so it actually hits on the beat. And then, as usual, we'll bring it down and fast fade. Actually, I don't think I'll need to run preview. Very effective, and it kind of looks nice to look at. So, that is most of the techniques I use when syncing in Vegas. Pretty much enough to get you by. Now, one thing I will say is, don't use this style for every single song. Not every single song is a stop-start as this one some flow more nicely and also something to remember is don't copy my style exactly i'm giving you this tutorial to show you how i sync in vegas and to give you little tips and tricks on how to get nice flow however it's up to you guys to really make your own unique style with these techniques you can create your own style i don't know how because this is my style and this is what i've stuck to for a long time so i'm very much in this sort of method. However, there are other things that you could change about it or other ways that you might interpret what I'm doing and that will lead to your own style. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section if there's anything I could have done differently, if there's something that you do differently, or if you have any questions on syncing technical problems. Uh, one thing I would like to show you when cutting clips uh, that are synced with velocity, if you cut them at the end, say here, and you actually want to extend it again, there's no problem. It sort of just, it keeps its sync, as you can see. However, if you cut it at the start and you want to elongate it, aha, look what's happening. It's moving it back. And this is the number one problem with syncing in velocity. What you can do to solve this is go a frame or two before, cut it there and drag it along. But it will result in a really, really weird transition. And this is just a problem that you'll have to uh, figure out how to fix yourself. It's just literally about making the frames match. Like here. Yeah, that's it. Just like that. So generally leave a lot of space like I have beforehand. And when you're cutting from the start, you can't just drag, you have to physically cut it. I hope you've gotten what you needed out of this. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, let me know, and I will give it a shot. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.